I think it is time we informed the Senate that our ability to use the force is diminished. Whoa, what? Where did that come from? And even if it's true, why would you tell the obviously corrupt Senate? Also, this movie uses the word Senate, Senator, and vote more than it uses the word force. Only the Dark Lord of the Sith knows of our weakness. Thankfully, he's not also the Supreme Chancellor. I mean, phew, could you imagine? No. You got that right. I saw my mother. Thank God a vision came to Anakin to go save his mother. I just wish it could have happened about 30 minutes ago. I'm sorry, I don't have a choice. You're right. You have no choice between ignoring your dream mom's drama and continuing to honor your non-dream pledge to hide and protect Padme. Fate is forcing your hand, as it often does, through vague dreams. Dad! No! Whoa, what the hell is going on? How did we get here? Obi-Wan fist fights with this dude instead of force choking him or force pushing him or any of the other non-hand-to-hand -hand force attacks. Ah yes, of course. I remembered to bring my throwable homing beacon that instantly sticks to anything I throw it towards. Also, the world of Star Wars is one in which a homing beacon like this can just casually be tossed on your ship without said ship's sensors picking it up whatsoever. Shouldn't rain be hitting the lightsaber and producing little puffs of smoke? Do you know where they are now? It's amazing, even with all the Jedi training and peacekeeping he's done over ten years, there wasn't one time he was allowed to fly over to Tatooine and visit his mom. He must have put a homing device on our hull. They do realize they're being tracked, but only after they arrive at their destination. Inconvenient. This is a clear case where the challenge is way too high for anyone to survive it. And therefore, you just sit in the theater wondering why Obi-Wan isn't dead. Get him, Dad! Get him! Fire! Boba Fett, ladies and gentlemen. Tell me, why is it in Star Wars when the bad guy ships fire at the good guy ships, the lasers go all around the ship instead of at least one blast hitting it? Once again, something easily catches up to another something that can't close any further distance when it's 50 feet away. Well, we won't be seeing him again. Overly cocky Jango Fett is overly cocky. Hey, I remember that scene. I just noticed something. There's really no reason R2 couldn't have come on this mission. All he's doing right now is following Padme and Anakin around. I'm pretty sure R4 is the red R2 you look for in toy stores at this point. Stay with the ship, R2. Why did you even let him out? I am C-3PO. So Otto sold me to some other person, and she decided to take the incomplete C-3PO with her? And someone decided to finish the job? Owen Lars, uh, this is my girlfriend, Baru. Let me get this straight. The powers that be decided that Luke would someday come to live here, even though Anakin met Owen and Baru? He didn't think that would be a huge risk? What if Vader decided to come back to the old homestead for whatever reason? Not that I'm complaining, but Padme decided to wear the super hot ab-bearing outfit to go meet Annie's mom. The editing is confusing. We were logically following Anakin as he seeks bloody revenge against the Tusken Raiders who killed his mom. And this scene makes us think we're still following him, but no, we're suddenly on an entirely different planet following Obi-Wan. We must persuade the Commerce Guild and the Corporate Alliance to sign the treaty. Just once, I'd like to see somebody hiding in a corner somewhere, and the bad guys aren't talking about the most important essence of their plan in earshot. Just once, I'd like to hear they had bagels for breakfast or something. Furthermore, the guy he was following, Django Fett, isn't even in this meeting with Count Dooku. So what kind of luck is that He just decided to walk around, find a secret opening in the mountains, and stumble on the plot of the movie? Count Dooku walks right past a Jedi here and does not sense him. Stay with me, Mom. In the grand tradition of all dying Star Wars characters, Shmi held on long enough for one final meeting before passing away. Also, Anakin watches his mother die because something something dark side motivation something something. This movie doesn't earn the dark side transformation of Anakin. He was a whiny kid for most of this movie and now he massacres a bunch of Tuscans. Had someone been here to stop him and that need for revenge festered in his heart, the next time would be a good time for a massacre. Most of everything we know about Anakin was talked about, not shown, and this comes off as rushed. Pain. Suffering. Yeah, but apparently your ability to use the Force isn't good anymore, so what can you trust? Death, I feel. Hmm, I don't feel any of that shit, but maybe I should act like I do. What's the bigger sin here? Bad guy bug thing stumbling upon Obi-Wan? Or Obi-Wan parking his ship out in the goddamn open like this? Anakin takes his dead rotting mother into the house because Jedi reasons, and also disease. Why'd she have to die? She probably didn't, but you left her alone here as a slave on this planet to pursue your own Jedi goals. What did you think was gonna happen to her? Happily ever after? I will be the most powerful Jedi ever. This is pretty much par for the course as to why we hated this performance. We kind of want Anakin to start being a colder person, definitely a lot less whiny at this point, more Darth vader -y. Instead, our brains keep referring to their shut up section. I killed them all. Don't use the pronoun game, Annie. Using the pronoun game leads to the dark side. And she still had sex with him after this, for some reason. And not just the men, but the women and the children too. Anakin can somehow tell Tuscan women and children from the men. I'm not even mad, that's amazing. I'm a Jedi. I know I'm better than this. And this is the only time we see Anakin struggle with the good and bad of his feelings. Everything else has been dark side and wanna screw Padme. I miss you so much. Lucas asked him to deliver this line as though his dick got cut off halfway through. But he also knew an enchanted fairy would eventually grow his dick back, so he's not super concerned about it. But he wants to seem like he is. He's carrying a message from an Obi-Wan Kenobi. Hmm. Uh, Master Annie, does that name mean anything to you? 
I wonder if he means old Ben. I have tracked the bounty hunter Django Fett to the droid foundries in Geonosis. Despite the fact that Django completely disappeared from the action, I managed to stumble upon a completely new part of the plot that is important for all the good guys to know. Hologram action sequence. He's like my father. But you heard Master Windu, he gave me strict orders to stay here. And Obi-Wan gave you strict orders to stay on Naboo. And we saw how that worked. Why the f*** is C-3PO suddenly on this mission? If only Senator Amidala were here. Entire sequence of events leads to Jar Jar making an important decision in the Senate to give Palpatine more power. Also, was this part of Palpatine's plan? Did he know that Padme would appoint the dumbest character alive to be her replacement when the hit the fan? How awesome would this be if Dooku had been in the first movie? And the first movie wasn't the first movie. How many awesome backstories are we left to imagine while the story leaves us wanting? The dark side of the Force has clouded their vision, my friend. Again, how? Perfect time to explain this bullshit and immediately goes on to the next subject. Wait, this is an exhaust vent they landed in, right? Do exhaust vents usually have perfect landing platforms for ships? Where are you going now? R2 decides to go against orders and leave the ship anyway, something he must only be doing to piss off C-3PO at this point, because at no time has R2 shown a tendency to go against orders since the new trilogy began. Conveyor belt of dangerous industry cliché! Also, this is the most video gamingest movie scene ever included in a movie just to sell a video game. I guess R2 knew that this would turn out okay. What a psychotic little bastard. Hey there, Star Wars fan. FYI, R2-D2 can fly. F*** you. I wonder what happened to poor little R2. He's always getting himself into trouble. How do you know that? You've only known R2 for a couple of hours. And don't give me he knew him from the first movie crap either, because 3PO was an off and on incomplete robot the entire time. Uh, I'm so confused. Maybe that explains why you aren't funny anymore. <laughs> movie is an asshole. That is the very definition of cheating and filmmaking, you f***er. This is equivalent to telling your mother you have terminal cancer, and then when she starts sobbing, you trash talk about how you pranked her and how stupid she is. Give me a break. Why would there be anything like this sitting around in this random part of the factory? And once again, R2 compatible. I still can't figure out why Django even needs to be here. On one planet, he's the guy they use to make clones. On another planet, they're making army bots, and he's here because Obi-Wan needed to catch a break. I thought that we had decided not to fall in love. You see why the romance should have taken off a lot sooner? There's basically 40 minutes left in this movie, and they're still trying to resolve this. I truly, deeply love you. George Lucas thinks people talk this way. Also, Jedi, skip! Our heroes luck out and are taken to an arena to be executed, instead of simply getting killed on the spot. Movie unintentionally inspires John Carter. I might be scared of these things if they didn't look like Tex Avery drawings put into the weird science machine and donated to the Umbrella Corporation. I've got a bad feeling about this. Character breaks the fourth wall to talk to the audience about the film itself. This creature basically didn't want to kill Amidala, just make her sexier. Nobody seems particularly concerned that one of the prisoners is free. This thing is terrible at thingy. Also, a simple kick to the chest incapacitates this heaping mound of psychosis. Hey George, while we're here, humanizing Boba Fett was one of the stupidest ideas you had in these prequels. And that's saying something. Aren't these animals weak-minded enough so they can Jedi mind trick them? Or is that just a human-to-human -human interaction? Obi-Wan pokes at the beast instead of just force-throwing the spear into its brain. Ow, my vagina! You're impossibly outnumbered. I don't think so. How did these robots know to start coming down the hallway? Everyone in power is here, and no one gave an order or pressed a button or anything that would make a robot army start coming down here dramatically. And why only four of them? Star Wars finally gives us a nerdgasm scene with dozens of Jedi and lightsabers all at once. And I'd take a sin or two off if I hadn't had to sit through two movies of mostly boring bullshit to finally get this. Since you enjoyed this in Phantom Menace so much, Lucas ups the ante with even more Jedi versus copious amounts of CGI droids. Why did the drone with the C-3PO head decide to march into battle? Doesn't his mind work differently? Wouldn't he just go lie down somewhere until all this was over? Jesus Christ, skip! Django Unchained. I'm terribly sorry about all this. Basically, these things don't even need heads if they have no control with them on. I quite decide myself. I hate you and I wish you would die. First off, this is too many goddamn shots to block. Second, and maybe more importantly, Padme doesn't have a lightsaber. How does she live? Look. Eagles? A perimeter create. What was that, Yoda? I couldn't hear you over the battle, this ship, and your three-pack-a-day voice. So if his dad's head had fallen out of the helmet right here, would he have been even more traumatized or... You know, you think he would have laughed a little. Because, come on, that's funny. Also, the birth of Bubba Fett might have been cool if that asshole didn't get casually tossed in a sarlacc. Okay, Sam, you're running, you're running, there's all sorts of battle going on around you, we'll fill that in later. <laughs> the Death Star is apparently fully operational in, like, 20 years. They must have had a million contractors working 24-7 on that thing. Cerebrum aside. Shoot him down! We're out of rockets, sir. F*** you, you are not. Why are you even still flying around then? Why didn't you tell anyone that before we got to this point? You're gonna pay for all the Jedi that you killed today, Dooku. 
saying things. Electricity, curiously a trait only dark side force users have. What a f***ing surprise. Is that the 50th limb cut off in this franchise? He could finish them both off right now, or at least Obi-Wan if he knows where Anakin is headed, but decides, nah. The dark side I sense in you. Which I somehow can't sense when I'm on Coruscant when Palpatine is around. And we've established we've lost much of our force power, but f it, I can now. Yoda finally pulls out a lightsaber. He finally fights. It took 10 hours of Star Wars to finally see this, and I'm torn because he's a bastard CGI creation now. Why does this guy need a cane again? Here was a glorious chance to see three Jedi all combining their force power together and stopping this ship from flying. Or, as we said before, why can't Yoda just stop this ship himself if size doesn't matter? This thing is smaller than Luke's ship in the swamp. The force is powerful, but it's no match for an internal combustion engine. Everybody goddamn misses. Let's talk about Palpatine's plan. It required Amidala to be taken off the planet so she couldn't vote on the Military Creation Act. Then she had to make Jar Jar Binks her replacement, who was then passively bullied to request a vote granting unlimited power to Palpatine. Then the Jedi have to stumble on a poison dart that was only used because another assassin failed, a dart that only a diner owner could verify. Then Palpatine removed the planet from the archives, which required even more sleuth work. Then when Obi-Wan went to the cloner planet, the people there showed him the entire plot no questions asked, which led him to Jango. Jango had to curiously leave for another planet where the droids were being manufactured so that Obi-Wan could relay that message back to the Republic, and only then could they get the ball rolling. Without all that, what did he plan to do? Begun. The Clone War has. Did Yoda just name this war? Or did the Jedi have some prophecy that warned of a clone war? I mean, who gave him the authority to name wars and sh**? Do you? Yes. Do you? Dude, I like totally did already. Lots. My goodness, you've grown. Grown more beautiful, I mean. You've grown up. Don't try to grow up too fast. But I am grown up. You've changed so much. Uh, you haven't changed a bit. You sure sprouted, huh? Oh, I grow up so Say but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. You've grown up. Because you're grown up and you're grown up and you're grown up. Over the first billion years, the universe continued to expand and cool as matter gravitated into these massive concentrations we call galaxies. There are fields, endless fields, where human beings are no longer born. We are grown. A is for Axiom, your home sweet home. B is for, by and large, your very best friend. Stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone, prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone, silence the pianos and with muffled drum. You, sir, truly are Mr. Incredible. You know, I was right to idolize you. I, I, I always knew you were tough, but tricking the probe by hiding under the bones of another super? Oh, man, I'm still geeking out about it. Whoever wrote this episode should die! I have had it with these mother snakes on this mother plane! Secret 